Good morning, everybody. My name is Kalina Ginyard. I'm the Program Compliance Specialist with the City of Columbia's Office of Business Opportunities. And we welcome you all today to the Federal Tax Updates for Your Small Business webinar. Um, before we go into the webinar, just a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, first, we do ask for all participants to please keep your devices muted so everyone that's on the call can hear our uh, guest speakers today. Secondly, we do ask if you have any questions re um, regarding the information that is covered in the webinar today to please put your questions in the chat and we will answer all questions toward the end of today's webinar. Um, everyone who has registered for the webinar today will receive a copy of the PowerPoint presentation by email later on this afternoon and we will have a recording available on our website hopefully in the next couple of days. So before we go into our presentation, um, just a couple of things I would like to talk about with the Office of Business Opportunities. So first, uh, the Office of Business Opportunities, we are located here in Columbia, South Carolina, and we um, service under three different areas. The first one is commercial lending, where we offer financial assistance to start up and existing businesses for growth, expansion, retention, and the creation of new jobs and assistance in the redevelopment of commercial corridors. Our second area is contractor and supplier diversity, training and support for city initiatives, designed to increase local contractors' capacity to compete for government contracts and other procurement opportunities. Those programs include our Mentor Protege Program, Local Business Enterprise, and the Columbia Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. And lastly, we have our Technical Assistance Education and Advocacy, the Business Development Assistance and Courses for Startups and Existing Businesses to Looking to Grow and Expand, Topics covered include marketing, use of social media, business plan development, finances, legal issues, and more. And before I go to the next slide, we do have OBO staff members that are here on the call. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce our director, Ms. Aisha Driggers. Aisha? Well, she's not going to speak. Well, she's Hi. Not hey, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. We're excited that um, Ms. Davis and her counterpart have joined us today to share this information. We have a lot of individuals that have registered, so we know this topic is very important to everyone. So just thank you for being here. We also have our Program Compliance Administrator, Ms. Cassandra Fletcher. Good morning, everyone. And I just wanted to actually say we greatly appreciate you all attending this event on today. Thanks. And we also have uh, additional staff members, Shante Cooper, Carla Eichelberger, and Latanya Germany, who are also on the call. So uh, one question that we get from a lot of small businesses are interested in wor working with the City of Columbia or offering their services to the City of Columbia. We do ask if you would like to become a registered vendor to register in the City of Columbia's EBIT system. And this is the link, which is columbiasc.ionwave.net and click on Supplier Registration to register your information in eBay. Once you do register, you will start to receive email notifications from Ion Wave eBay on any solicitations pertaining to the goods and services that you offer will be sent via email. And this is, um, again, this is the Ion Wave eBay portal where you can find bid opportunities. And we also have our OBO newsletter. And this newsletter is sent out weekly to everyone that's on the distribution. And in this newsletter is information on upcoming events that our office and our community partners, such as Richland County Office of Small Business Opportunity, U.S. Small Business Administration, S, um, excuse me, and other local um, state and federal and local entities have, uh, have coming up regarding to small businesses. So if you would like to register, the link is located at the bottom and that is obo.columbiasc dot gov forward slash newsletter. And again, those newsletters come out every Monday via email. And upcoming events, one event that we're going to be doing in a couple of weeks, this is Bridging the Generational Gap in the Workplace Series, the Acquisition and Retention of Generation Z. And Tyson Brown of Project One, One Way will be the featured speaker on this. We still have registration available. And the link to register is bridging the generational gap series.eventbrite.com. So if you would like to register for that event, you can do that. And this will be an in-person and virtual webinar. So if you would like to come in person, we will be at the Earlwood Park Community Center, 1113 Recreation Drive here in Columbia. 
But if you have any questions on it, feel free to contact me here at the office at 545-3950 or send us an email at obo at columbiasc.gov. And finally, um, our small business town hall. This is the town hall with the City of Columbia and the U.S. Small Business Administration will be hosting on Thursday, March 28th at the Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center. Um, if you have any questions regarding this event, um, you can contact us here at the office. And this event will feature Mayor Daniel Rickerman, U.S. Small Business Administration Regional Administrator Alan Thomas, and representatives from the Office of Business Opportunities, Richland County Office of Small Business Opportunity, and other um, entities to talk about all the good, all the resources here in Columbia for small business owners and entrepreneurs. So finally, if you all have any questions regarding the Office of Business Opportunities, the services we can offer, or any resources that we, make, we may can help you with regarding your small business, or if you would like to become a business owner, you can contact us here at the office. Our office is located here on 1401 Main Street, fourth floor. We're right here in downtown Columbia. And you can contact us at 803-545-3950, or you can email us at obo at columbiasc.gov. And you can also check us out on our website where we update it we daily for any upcoming events or things that we do here at the office. And that website is obo.columbiasc.gov. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our guests for the evening. If you could, uh, please welcome from the Internal Revenue Service, Ms. Yvette Davis, and also Mr. Paul Sadler. Thank you so much, Kalina. Let me just go ahead and pull this up so I can start sharing. And then I'll start talking. Let's see. And let me know when you see it. We can see it. On your screen. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So yes, thank you so much, uh, Kalina, and to the City of Columbia, Office of Business Opportunities. We are so grateful for this platform. We're grateful for the opportunity to partner with you all finally and to get to talk to, to your, your folks and to kind of share some information with them that we feel will be very beneficial uh, for our employers, our business owners out there in South Carolina. We are always grateful for the opportunity when we get a chance to speak kind of sort of one-on-one, -on -one, <laughs> if you will, with our small business, uh, small businesses and, and those sole proprietors and all those, all of you partnerships and all of that. We're so grateful for this opportunity because it is rare that we get a chance to do this. So uh, thanks all to all of you for taking time out of your day to join us and to come and learn something new. So I tip my hat to you and say this is a, a definitely going to be an opportunity for you to ask your questions. It's going to be an opportunity for you to hear directly from the IRS on just some things that we feel you should you should really know as as business owners and and employers and things of that nature. So I want to stop for one quick moment and just say. Thank you to my wonderful colleague, Paul Sadler, Jr. out of North Carolina. I'm so glad to have my compadre on here with me. He is uh, new to, to this position. However, he's not new to the IRS. So he's got a lot of knowledge in, in, <laughs> in his background uh, from the things that he's done for the last, what did you say, Paul, 15 years? I'm not uh, sure. 18. 18 years. Yes. So he's he's had he's got a lot of experience and and he brings a wealth of knowledge. So I'm grateful to him for being here and he's going to share some things with you in just a moment. Um, and again, I'm Yvette Davis and I've been with the service now for 36 years. And yes, I started when I was 10. No. Five, no, okay. So uh 36 years. <laughs> 36 years. It's 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 been uh interesting. It's been interesting, but I do have a heart for my business owners because I started off in collections. And unfortunately, a lot of the times I met with business owners, it was because they were already in trouble. 
So I really love and appreciate what I get to do now because instead of being reactive as a revenue officer in collections, I'm able to be proactive in your business and get ahead of some things and get some questions answered for you. Now, let me just say this. We are in outreach education. I'm a senior stakeholder liaison. I don't have access like I used to as a revenue officer to your employer identification numbers, social security numbers, things of that nature. Uh, so my research and information that we provide is going to be general information for your business. It's going to be a resource that you can take with you and go back to irs.gov and read for yourself what we are telling you on this on this uh, um, in this event. Okay, so it's not going to be Yvette said. It's going to be this is what the IRS resource is, and you need to take the opportunity to review it for yourself and apply it to your business situation. I'm gonna take a moment and plug our tax professionals. If you have a great tax professional on your side, I want you to put in the chat for me, yes, I do have a tax professional, or yes, something to let me know. Because as a business owner, that is one of the things, that's one of the things that I promote, that I, I ask that you do. Please take a moment, Find someone who can actually work with you in your business as you grow your business, right? As you grow your business so that you can have someone who is uh, uh, educated in the things that will help you help save you money. If you are just starting out, if you're a small business owner, you're just getting started. If you feel you don't know if the money is worth it, let me tell you something. The money you spend on a good tax professional is going to be money in your pocket down the road because they are going to know the information that's going to, they're gonna know about that um, work opportunity tax credit, that if you hire a certain type of target uh, uh, in, uh, worker, you're gonna get a credit as a business owner. They will know these things for you, some things that you may not know uh, for yourself, okay? One, one of the things we're gonna talk about today, the employee retention credit. They're going to be able to tell you, hey, you can benefit from this employee, employee retention credit because of fill in the blank. And you're going to have that person on your side and they're going to know your business. They're going to know your situation and be able to apply the law and the credits that are that come along with it so that you can uh, save as much money as possible. If you're like me, I, OK, I pay my taxes. I file my, file my returns on time and I pay what I owe. But please understand, I want to pay what I owe, no more, and definitely no less, all right? And a good tax pro will help you do that. At the end, I'm also going to face, uh, I'm going to share with Ms. Uh, Kalina a resource document that's going to have some links in it to give you some resources beyond this conversation so that you'll have something to go back to and, and you'll be able to, to find the information that we're sharing with you today. So along with this PowerPoint, we're, I'm going to create a, a document that is going to speak to the things that we're talking about today. And you'll have links that you can in, within that document that you can use uh, beyond today. Okay. Uh, when you use the chat to ask your questions, and please ask questions, Make sure you don't include any type of personally personally identifiable information like social security numbers, employer identification numbers, people's names, things of that nature. Keep it general in nature, okay? All right, um, okay, I think that's all I have. So uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and stop talking and I'm gonna turn it over to Paul to get us started. Paul, the floor is yours. Thank you, Yvette, and uh, welcome everyone, and thanks for attending. Uh, I do echo everything that uh, Yvette said, and uh, you know, just just know that irs.gov has a lot of valuable resources. If you have questions uh, that uh, one of us cannot or are not available to answer, you can always check irs.gov and give you information and get uh, just go to the search bar, type whatever it is you're looking for and uh, they will provide you whatever resources are available. Um, <clears throat> so let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. 
Uh, some of you may have already heard of Iris's online accounts for uh, individuals and business online account access for sole proprietors. Now, the IRS announced the launch of the second phase of a new online self-service tool for businesses that expands business tax account capability and eligible entity types. IRS expands business tax account access to S corporations, partnerships, and added the ability to view business tax transcripts online. The Inflation Reduction Act funding is allowing IRS to improve taxpayer services for your small bids. So <clears throat> publication 5904 is going to give you a little more detail about the IRS uh, business tax account. Uh, Yvette will be putting a link to this uh, publication in the chat for your convenience. So now we want to talk a little bit about spear phishing. The IRS urges businesses to be on the lookout for a variety of suspicious email requests. Through these spear phishing emails, scammers try to steal client and employee data with the goal of getting fraudulent tax refunds. These requests can range from an email that looks like it's for from a potential new client or customer uh, that contains malicious attachments or URL, URL to a request that looks like it comes from an official source. They can target payroll and human resource departments um, asking for sensitive form W-2 information. Excuse me. These examples demonstrate how spear phishing is a tailored phishing attempt to a specific organization or business. Spear phishing begins with a suspicious email, but may appear legitimate at first. Some scammers will even use uh, Iris logo and claim something like action required. Your account has now been put on hold. Often these emails stress urgency and will ask businesses to click on links and, and input information or verify information. Spear phishing increases the potential for a data breach by criminals seeking um, businesses, I, EIN, um, employee social security numbers, or access to your customers or clients tax related information, which increases the potential for the uh, number of victims because it's only the businesses personal information that has been stolen, but also has the business's clients. People can sidestep spear phishing by ever clicking suspicious links, never clicking suspicious links, double checking the requests with the original sender and being vigilant year round, not just during the filing season. I'm sure every uh, I'm sure many of you have heard of employee retention credit and the potential for qualified business owners to receive up to $26,000 per employee for tax years 2020 and 2021. Remaining true to their nature, scammers found a way to scam unsuspecting business owners and some who didn't own businesses into applying for the credits uh, that they didn't even qualify to receive. Last year, IRS introduced a way to help these taxpayers resolve or withdraw these ineligible ERC claims. We want you to know that we share your concern that honest taxpayers have been duped by promoters into these uh, filing these false claims. We have been working on solutions to help. The new withdrawal option allows employers with pending claims to avoid future repayment of a refunded credit with penalties and interest. So we encourage them to closely review the withdrawal option and the uh, requirements, which we're over, overviewing today. We continue to urge taxpayers to consult with a trusted tax professional rather than mar marketing company about this complex tax credit. So now we wanna look at the, um, there is a moratorium on the employee retention credit. Let me take a moment to recap what the IRS has been doing uh, regarding the ERC in the last couple of months. 
amid rising concerns about a flood of incorrectly claimed employee retention credits, the Internal Revenue Service announced on September the 14th an immediate moratorium through at least the end of the year on processing new employee retention credit claims. We did this to help protect honest small business owners and organizations from scams. Here's some con context for, your, for this decision. Through mid-December, the IRS had received around 3.6 million ERC claims, but consider this. Our current open inventory was over 600,000, virtually all of which uh, was received within 90 days before the moratorium. That means about 15% of all ERC claims received since the start of the program three and a half years ago came in a 90-day period before the moratorium. That's an incredibly large number to have so far beyond the, pan the pandemic and two years after the time period covered by the program. So the moratorium was ordered following growing concerns that a substantial share of new claims from the aging program are ineligible and increasingly putting businesses at financial risk by being pressured and scammed by aggressive promoters and marketing. Now that the moratorium is over, We've had some hard lessons learned and are moving ahead with some additional resources like ERC eligibility checklists. Hey, Paul, let, yes. me, let me stop you right there and just interject very quickly. Okay. So with this moratorium, uh, basically what happened is what he stated, but what's happened, what happened was that we had uh, the, the, we let everybody know that the, uh, the time to file the claim was coming to an end, right? So for 2020 claims, for those 941Xs, those, those uh, requests for ERC, that, that comes to an end April 15th of this year. So there was an onslaught of people, of scammers coming out of the woodworks, trying to get in before that deadline of April 15th, 2024. That's for 2020, the deadline to, to file a, a, an ERC claim is April 15th, 2024. For 2021 uh, claims, that deadline is in 2025, April 15th. All right, okay, that's all. Thanks, Paul. No problem. So <clears throat> the IRS reminds anyone who incorrectly claims the ERC that they must pay it back. Uh, possibly with penalties and interest. A business tax exempt group could find itself in a much worse financial position if it has to pay back the credit than if the credit was never claimed in the first place. Taxpayers should take their uh, particular precautions because a promoter can collect a hefty contingency fee um, paid from the ERC refund. Uh, this underscores the importance of taxpayers taking precautionary steps to independently verify their eligibility to receive credit, uh, especially uh, before applying through a promoter. To help employers determine if they're eligible for the ERC, the IRS uh, has created the new interactive ERC eligibility checklist on irs.gov. That provides a quick, high-level way for them to figure out if they might qualify to claim the ERC or if they potentially need to resolve an incorrect claim. Given that some small businesses and organizations may have been misled by aggressive promoters, this, is a, this checklist is an important reference tool for people who are reviewing their eligibility. Within these if-then tools, we, we link out to FAQs for the ERC. These FAQs were updated in mid-September and have more information about common areas of mis misinformation that promoters use. For example, the IRS is seeing many instances of people Im improperly citing supply chain issues as a basis for the ERC claim. An employer with those issues will very rarely meet the eligibility criteria. This checklist provides cautions and resources to help determine eligibility. Uh, we also have a PDF version that taxpayers can print and use to
to review each step of eligibility. Now, let's talk about the with, withdrawal process, which IRS announced in mid-October. For those who have filed prior to the moratorium and um, have a pending claim, they should carefully review the program guidelines with a trusted tax professional and check the new employee retention credit eligibility checklist on irs.gov. If a business claimed the ERC prior to the moratorium and the claim has not been processed or paid by the IRS, they can uh, withdraw the claim if they now believe the, it was submitted incorrectly. Even if their case is already under audit or uh, awaiting audit. You can use the ERC claim withdrawal process if all these factors apply. You must have <clears throat> You must have made a claim on an adjusted employment tax return that was amended only to claim the ERC with no other adjustment. You also withdraw the entire amount of the ERC claim, not just the just a portion. Finally, the IRS must must not have uh, paid your claim, uh, but if it has, you must not have cashed or deposited the refund check. Please note that if someone willfully filed a fraudulent ERC claim, or if they assisted or conspired in such conduct, withdrawing a fraudulent claim will not exempt them from potential criminal investigation and prosecution. But now you cannot use the withdrawal process if any of the following apply. The credit you are trying to withdraw uh, was filed on an original employment tax return. However, you can't correct the amount of the ERC claim on an original tax return by filing an adjusted return that applies to your business or organization and making the payment for any tax due. You are trying to withdraw only a portion of the ERC. For example, you claim $50,000 of ERC but realize you are only eligible for twenty-five thousand. Your adjusted return re reports um, tax items not on your original return, in addition to your ERC claim. You need to make other corrections to your return. You received your ERC refund and cashed or deposited the refund check, or you received a notice or letter from the IRS disallowing the entire amount of the ERC. If you are not able to withdraw your claim, you can still file another adjusted return if you need to reduce the amount of the ERC claim or make other adjustments to your amended return. If you use a professional uh, payroll company, including a, a professional employer organization, certified professional employer organization, or some other third party payer arrangement, and they filed your ERC claim for you, you should consult with them uh, if, if you want to withdraw the ERC claim. Depending on how the company filed your claim, individually or batched with others, you may need to have them submit your withdrawal request. Otherwise, you'll need to follow the different, follow different steps depending on your situation. Generally, if you haven't received a refund, you can withdraw the ERC claim even if you've been notified that the claim is under audit. If you have the if you have received the refund, you generally can't withdraw if you cashed or deposited the refund. For more information on how to make the withdrawal based on the first three scenarios, please visit please excuse me please visit irs.gov forward slash withdraw my ERC. I'm going to turn it over to Yvette to discuss the newest information for those who fall into the fourth situation listed above. Yvette, over to you. Okay, thanks, Paul. Thanks so much. All right, folks, so yeah, so for the withdrawal portion of this, for the first three listed on this slide, uh, I'm going to include some links again in that resource document that I'll be sharing with Kalina uh, later on today so that she can send it out to you all. 
uh, because now we do have a new uh, a new uh, process in place for those folks who who fit into the category of they received the check uh, and they may have cashed the check or deposited the check from getting from the employee retention credit. And then they realize, hey, whoops, I was duped. I should not have cashed this check. I didn't, I'm not entitled to this money, right? So uh, there are a lot of people who fall into this category and a lot of people are, are now being contacted. And please understand folks, the IRS is going to be looking for you to repay any type of funding it, it, the employee retention credit money that you received, if it was re was received erroneously, uh, fraudulently, uh, if this received fraudulently, then there are going to be additional penalties, uh, intention intentional penalties that's going to be applied to the the balance that you're going to have to pay back. So they are pursuing the repayment of these funds. They are pursuing prosecution of those folks who intentionally defraud the government and, and requested these funds uh, fraudulently, all right? So we have the Employee Retention Credit Voluntary Disclosure Program. And there are some advantages within this, within this program that we're gonna talk about. And I'm gonna share with you who can participate and some additional resources. I'm gonna provide those as well uh, while we're talking and in the document that I'm gonna share uh, towards the end of, uh, of the day, all right, or this afternoon. So let's just kind of do a quick recap of the initiatives relative to ERC, because I know if, if you've been paying attention, a lot has happened within the employee retention credit in the last three and a half to four years. Uh, we want you to know again that we do see that there are so many fraudulent folks out there uh, who are taking advantage of small businesses unknowing. They, they just don't know. And just like with the, uh, the um, what was it? The employee, uh, what is it called? The, the EIP, that, that, that $1,500, that $600. Economic impact, yeah. Yeah, that economic impact payment. Yeah, just like with that, those that was an opportunity for fraudsters to come in and and defraud people who were unknowingly uh, either qualified for it and they took their checks or they did not qualify for it and they still filed and requested those funds and received those payments erroneously. The employee retention credit, we're talking up to $26,000, folks. So you know those fraudsters are going to be out there and they're going to come up with ways to scam these folks. So we know that there are some honest taxpayers out there who were def defrauded by, by these promoters and they were defrauded and convinced to file false claims. And there are these solutions that the, that the IRS has in place. For example, the, the withdrawal process that's in place. And then now the employee retention credit voluntary disclosure program. Okay. So again, folks, there, there are some opportunities for you. So fret not if you fall into the category where you were defrauded and now you're just realizing or getting an understanding that you were not entitled to these funds. There, is, there are several opportunities now for you to, to get some, get some assistance and some relief. So let's go ahead and talk about the, the voluntary disclosure program process and this was just announced in December of last year, December, 2023. But, so for those folks who claimed and received that employee retention credit, those funds, but you're not quite sure if you're eligible, then you should carefully review the program guidelines. And I'm going back to the first thing, one of the first things I said, you should review it with a trusted tax professional. Okay, and you also now have the employee retention eligibility checklist that Paul mentioned. And again, you can find that on irs.gov forward slash ERC. Okay, so talk to a trusted tax professional about it. Make sure, okay, I did these. I just, if even if even if you had, because I've heard this before, there are some folks who have a, a tax professional 
that they work with every year for their business. And then they would get a letter, an email, or some type of correspondence from a supposed um, expert at getting the ERC, the Employee Retention Credit. They were convinced by that letter, by that email, by that contact, even beyond what their tax professional was actually telling them, they were convinced, I'm going to try this with my video on, okay? They were convinced that they qualified, right? But in actuality, they did not, all right? So if an employer claimed and received that ERC and now know that they were ineligible, they may be able to qualify and apply for this employee retention. I need to just do a transfer from. They may qualify uh, and they may be eligible to apply for this ERC voluntary disclosure program. Okay. This program folks is only open for now through March 22nd, 2024. So I'm glad we're talking to you all today. Okay. So if you, or if you know someone who received those funds and you're like, okay, sis, my, my, my friends, I, I'm not sure you, you, you need to make sure you qualify for this because the IRS is going to be collecting and they're going to be assessing penalties and they're going to, they got the, they got the treasury inspector general and they're out there and they will be looking to prosecute you for receiving these fraudulent funds, just like with the PPP. It's the same thing. So Basically what's happening, again, this program is open through March 22nd, 2024. The program itself requires the employer to pay back that ERC that was, was received minus 20%, okay? If they cooperate with the IRS and provide any requested information, sign a closing agreement, then the IRS is not gonna charge penalties or interest on that ERC claim amount, if they pay it in full minus that 20%, by the time uh, the you as an employer, you've signed that closing agreement and you've sent it to the IRS, okay? The IRS is also gonna commit not to examine that ERC on your employment tax returns for tax periods resolved within the terms of that uh, the voluntary disclosure program. Okay, so under the ERC Voluntary Disclosure Program, you don't need to, to repay any of the interest that you received on your ERC refund, and you don't have to amend your income tax returns to reduce wage expenses, okay? That's huge, right? So, so again, get with a, a, uh, your tax professional to give you, to help guide you through that process. Now let's talk about some additional advantages of this, of this program, okay? So again, there are a lot of benefits to this program if you receive the ERC, but you weren't actually entitled to get it. Uh, and, now want, and, and you now wanna go ahead and pay that money back, right? So if you apply to this program, again, you only need to repay 80%. Remember I mentioned the 20% that is reduced, right? You need to pay 80% of that ERC that you received as a credit on your return uh, or as a refund. Again, folks, I'm going to say this again. You don't, have to re you don't have to repay any interest that you received. And now listen, uh, what I've heard is that there are people who received checks in the, uh, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? So any interest that you gain from hundreds of thousands of dollars is going to be significant, especially as a small business owner. Okay, that's huge. You're not going to have to be. You're not going to have to repay any interest that that you received on that ERC refund. Okay, um, you're not going to have to amend your income tax return to reduce wage expenses. That's huge. Okay, that twenty percent reduction. I already heard this question before. That twenty percent reduction is not taxable as income. That's huge, okay? The IRS is not gonna charge penalties um, or interest on the, the, the ERC that's repaid in full minus, you know, that 80%, okay? 
they're not going to charge any interest on that. The IRS won't examine your employee, your employment tax returns for any of the periods that you that are involved, whether it's from periods in 2020 through 20 through the end of 2021. That's huge. Okay. Um, all right, so let's move on. So who can apply? So if all of these factors apply to you, then you can go ahead and apply. Okay, your ERC claimed was claimed on an employment tax return. It has been processed and paid as a refund. You've cashed the check or you've deposited the check, or if the if you received the payment in the form of a credit and it was applied to some other tax period uh, that you had a balance due on. Okay. You think that now you were not entitled to any of that ERC for whatever period that you received it for. Uh, for example, if you claimed again $50,000 of ERC and realized you weren't eligible to get any of that claim, um, then you could apply. You should, you, you should consider applying for this ERC Voluntary Disclosure Program. Okay, If you want to return the entire amount the entire amount of the ERC claimed uh, and you received uh, that you received for a, any given tax period. If you want to return the entire amount for any tax period. All right, folks, side note. Okay, there are four quarters in a year. Okay, if you received a, an employee retention credit for two of the two of the four quarters, uh, then, and you want to return the entire amount for the fourth quarter, you can you need to be applying because you feel that you were not entitled to it. Okay. Um, all right. If you use a third party payer to file your employment tax return or claim your ERC, then you can apply for the ERC voluntary uh, disclosure program yourself. You're going to have to contact that third party who submitted your application, the, the request. They're going to have to be the ones to submit that 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 application for the employee retention credit voluntary disclosure program. Okay, this is huge, all right? If somebody willfully filed a fraudulent ERC claim uh, or if they helped you, uh, assisted you, or they conspired and um, applied for the, and, and they applied for the ERC Voluntary Disclosure Program, uh, then they're not gonna be, this is not gonna exempt them from potential criminal investigation and prosecution. If there was, malintent, they willfully did this, then they're not going to be exempt from criminal investigation and prosecution. Okay. So just because you pay the money back does not mean that the, that the government will not pursue criminal prosecution against you, basically. Okay. So now if you can, you, you cannot use this process if any of the following or what's listed on the slide applies. Your ERC claim has not yet been processed and unpaid, uh, or if it was paid and the refund check has not been cashed or deposited, you should not apply for this process. If you're trying to repay only a portion of your ERC, right? If you got that $50,000 and you realize you were only eligible for $25,000, you should not use this program to apply. If you are under examination by the IRS, you cannot use this process to apply. Okay. If you're under criminal investigation, you cannot use this process to apply. Okay. If you have reversed your ERC to zero, for instance, if you previously filed an amended employment tax return to eliminate all of your ERC, then you're generally not eligible for this program for the period that you amended. However, if you filed this amended uh, employment tax return before December 21st, 2023, the IRS will consider, they will review your application and the decision made as to whether or not it's accepted or not is gonna be on a case by case uh, basis. So you have nothing to lose if you take that chance to and apply, okay? Because all, all you're doing is saying, hey, I made a mistake. I wanna go ahead and apply and you may or may not, it may or may not be accepted, okay? Um, again, who can't apply. If you received a notice or letter from the IRS disallowing the entire amount of your ERC, 
it's already been it's already gone through the process so you can't apply for for this program okay in some situations you you well let's just say this if you take the take the time and apply for this program um, you may or may not be successful but you won't know unless you try okay there are some additional FAQs on irs.gov about who can apply, who shouldn't apply, who qualifies, who doesn't qualify, and the qualifications. Uh, so please take a moment to go to irs.gov. And again, I'll and include this, uh, this link in the resource document, but it's the irs.gov forward slash ERC FAQ for some frequently asked questions about this, uh, about the voluntary disclosure program. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about applying. All, uh, all ERC applications or applicants need to prepare a form 15434. And this is the application for employee retention credit voluntary disclosure program. There's also a package of information as listed on the screen that you need to include. I will again, supply a link to this information, as well as a link to the form 15434, so that if you feel that you qualify for it, you can go ahead and apply, all right? So, all right, so let's move on, okay? With this process, you, you wanna ensure that the authorized person is signing your application in any other forms, any other applicable form. Remember I mentioned before, the person who submits the form on your behalf, it's a third party that 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 submitted the the request for that uh, for the ERC in the first place. Those are those are authorized persons. Okay. Once that package is submitted uh, using what we call the document upload tool, again, I'll include the link in in the website in the the document resource document. Um, again, remember it has to be submitted by 11.59 p.m. March 22nd, 2024, okay? And this is the only way, using this document upload tool, and it's online, that's the only way that you can apply for the Voluntary Disclosure Program, okay? Uh, again, if you use a paid professional, like a payroll company, um, some type of professional employer organization, um, what else do they have? The, the CPEOs, the Certified Professional Employer Organizations, uh, or some other third party, all right? If you use them, then they need to file your ERC and they, they file that claim for you. You can apply for the ERC uh, Voluntary Disclosure Program yourself. You're going to have to contact that third party so that they can submit those documents on your behalf uh, to to qualify for the the VDP, okay. So keep that in mind. All right. So who can sign these documents or the application uh, listed here? You will see, based on the entity type, who has the authority to sign that that closing agreement that you're going to upload to the the to the document upload tool to apply for the, the program, okay? This slide basically outlines who can sign, again, based on the entity type. We have um, the sole proprietorship, co corporation, partnership, so on and so forth, okay? You're gonna get a copy of this, the, this PowerPoint, so you don't have to, to make any notes or write that down, so you'll have that, okay? Continuing here with who's authorized to sign those documents and upload them for you. Okay. Okay. One thing I do like about this, and because we're using the document upload tool, side note, the document upload tool is also something that you would use if you received a notice from the IRS requesting information or requesting documentation or, or uh, requesting whatever. If you get a notice from the IRS, there's going to be this little number at the top that you can use to correspond with the IRS and, rep and reply to that notice that you received in the mail. 
the document upload tool is something that they created last year for us to correspond with, uh, for you to be able to correspond with the IRS electronically. And the process is a lot quicker that way. Okay, just a little side note. Okay, so whether it's electronic or digital signature, those are allowed in this process. And again, you can find more information about our signature, uh, author authorized signatures on irs.gov, okay? Okay, so when we talk about calculating and paying, the amount of the ERC to be repaid is 80% of the ERC that is, uh, that is claimed, right? For whatever the tax period is that, that you agree that you were not entitled to receive. The amount is calculated again on that form 15434, okay? Uh, and if you're applying for more than one period, you can use one form for all of the periods that you're applying for. So you don't have to have one form for each period. You can put them all on that one form, okay, when you're applying. Okay. All right, let's move to this next one. So when it comes to paying at the time, when you're paying at the time that you apply for the ERC VDP, uh, that can help speed up the process and resolve your case a lot quicker. So if you owe the money, you apply and you send the payment in, then that can help move the process along a lot quicker to getting to an acceptance from the IRS, okay? But if you can't full pay what is due, then that that's fine. Um, you can you can be considered for an installment agreement. With that, you're going to need to submit a form 433B, and that's just a a, a snapshot of your your uh, your information about your business income, your business expenses, things of that nature, to let the IRS know uh, this is what you have coming in, this is what you've got going out so that they can make a determination as to what you qualify for in an installment agreement, okay? So that 433B is just a statement of income and expenses for your business uh, so that the IRS can determine how much of a monthly payment you're gonna have to, you you're, you you could qualify to, to pay, okay? Uh, this additional information is needed for the IRS so that they can do a thorough review of you, your situation, and then make a final determination, okay, as to whether or not you qualify for an installment agreement, okay? And depending on the facts that the IRS finds, uh, they may ask you for additional information. And just like with any other process, please make sure you reply to the IRS when they reach out to you as promptly as possible. The longer you take to reply, the longer the process will take, okay? Um, they're going to give you deadlines and not meeting those deadlines could put you in jeopardy of not even being qualified for, for the, for this process. Okay. All right. So I'm trying to see if there are any questions in the chat. Yeah. No questions in the chat yet. Okay. I'm in you right now. You did. Okay. Thank you. Coming in. Okay, so this is just an example. I know it's kind of small, but this is an example of what the uh, application actually looks like. And it's a fillable form. The instructions are should be relatively simple, but we've also put out things before that we thought should have been straightforward, but you all just let me know. It just, if, if you find that the application is not easily followed, then uh, please reach out and let us know at, and I'll put this in the chat or, or Paul, can you put in the chat cl.sl.area.4 at irs.gov? That's our, our email address. If you have issues, even with this program itself, the process or completing the application, please email us and let us know because the only way we can fix things is if we hear from you and you let us know, hey, this is the issue. This is what I was trying to do, and this is not working. Okay. One more time. One more time, event. All right. So it's cl. Yeah. Dot sl. Yeah. Dot area. 
dot four, the number four, at irs.gov. Okay. Thank you, Got sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this form can be downloaded and it's going to have some instructions along with it as well. So as you complete it, the amounts on the bottom of the of page one are going to be calculated for you. Okay. And um, we've heard that some people have had trouble accessing the form itself. So if you have some issues again, please reach out to us via the email address that Paul dropped in the chat. Uh, to use the fillable form, then you're going to need to have some basics when it comes to um, the type of system that you that you're using. All right. So you need to have the current version of Adobe Reader or Acrobat Pro. Um, there's a list of resources that I'm going to include in that my list for resources is getting longer and longer, Kalina. Um, <laughs> All right, the more the better. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. All right, um, so it, it, I'm just thinking, as I'm going along, I'm thinking this is gonna be helpful. So I'm gonna include a link for, for this particular form as well to help you all with downloading and printing it out if, if, if you need to do that, all right? So, so I'll make sure and include those those instructions and that information as well. Okay. And again, you're gonna you you're gonna submit this online using the document upload tool. And I'll, I'll make sure and have a link in there about the document upload tool as well and all the benefits besides the the using this for using the document upload tool for the one five four three four. Okay. So just to, to go over a few things. Uh, these are just some key takeaways from, from what we've talked about. For those filers of those claims that, that have been processed and paid, and you feel, oh man, I shouldn't have done that, I'm not eligible, please consider applying for the Voluntary Disclosure Program, okay? Remember that the, the, this program is only available through March 22nd, 2024, and that's 11.59 p.m., folks, March 22nd. <laughs> 2024. There are so many benefits of the program, including paying only 80% of the ERC claim that you actually received with no penalties and no interest uh, if you pay, if you full pay it at the time of the closing agreement. And that's the, the form that you're going to upload uh, with your with your with your program request. Okay. The withdrawal option is still available. And Paul talked about that. Uh, this is for, it's still available to those folks who are ineligible to use this program. And you want to consider the withdrawal process as well to avoid receiving any type of erroneous refunds. If you have not already received it, please consider using the withdrawal program so that you don't get this money and, and you're not entitled to it and then have to repay uh, repay that that money plus interest and penalties because if you don't qualify for the voluntary disclosure program all bets are off and you will be expected to pay the full amount plus any penalties and interest that's a cert that that come along with it uh these are pr these promoters the e employee retention credit promoters they're constantly changing their marketing tactics okay and we constantly try to remind you all to look for a trusted tax professional okay that tax professional who's gonna help you and they because they understand the this this whole process the employee retention credit is complex right it is complex right so you need somebody to who knows about the process and who can walk you through it okay the money that you pay to a good tax professional i promise you you're going to get that money back 10 times over all right, don't try to go it alone and, and, and lose out, okay? So you've got the promoters or the marketing person trying to get huge contingencies from refunds or monies that they got on your behalf that you shouldn't have received. But those contingencies, you're not gonna get that money back from that promoter. You're not gonna get that money back from that scammer. <laughs> that fee has been paid and they are gone. Okay, uh, and, and that, that if you can't tell already, that bothers me because they're taking advantage of unsuspecting 
small business owners who are trying their best to not just stay afloat, but grow, expand, and remain relevant for years and years to come, okay? So please make sure you're vigilant when it comes to these types of things. If it seems too good to be true, it probably isn't, it's probably not true. So we're gonna continue, the IRS is gonna continue to work with tax professionals to give them the information that they need to make sure that when they talk to you, they are well versed on whatever it is that that the issue of the hot topic is of the day uh, so that they can help you in your business. OK, we want to make sure that our small businesses continue to grow and continue to prosper. Right. And, and not be taken advantage of. OK. I'm going to include this as a part of the resources for the voluntary disclosure program and and a few other things as I've already mentioned. This is some other general information uh, on, on the ERC. Again, this is something that I'm going to also include in that resource document. Just It's just gonna be linked in the resource document here. If you click on it in the PowerPoint, it's not linked quite yet. Okay, so we've got a lot of resources out there for you and we wanna make sure you use this information, okay? And, and that it's it's accessible to you and that you, you know, you have what you need to make the right decision, right? And be able to, to avoid having to pay back money that you weren't entitled to, okay? There are some other resources that we have here the where you can connect with the IRS. We do have the IRS to go mobile app. And this mobile app just gives you quick access to our different social media. You can sign up for helpful tax tips. You can check your tax refund status. Uh, you can even make a payment, all right, on the IRS to go mobile app. So it's available in English and Spanish. And this is for those folks who may have an Android or those um, iOS mobile devices. So you can use it for that. And yes, folks, we are on social media. <laughs> We, you can connect with us through YouTube, YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, and I've got on here Twitter. I need to to update that. That's X. Uh, it is now X, but that that's our handle at IRS Tax Security, and Twitter, Instagram. What else? For our subscriptions, if you are a small business owner, please subscribe at minimum to e-news for small businesses. In that newsletter, you're going to get information about ERC tax credits, the updates and small business tax credits, anything relative to, to businesses, business owners, uh, you're gonna get it in that newsletter, okay? So it's in that email. And, and I promise you, if you subscribe to it, you're not going to be inundated with a bunch of emails that's not relevant to taxes and small businesses. They're not going to bombard you with the emails like I used to get a whole bunch of emails from, well, you know what, maybe I won't say that because this is being recorded. From a particular uh, place that I subscribe to, I would get three or four emails from this particular company every single day without fail. E-news for small businesses is not that. They're going to give you what you need when you need it, uh, up-to-date information on business tax credits that could save you money ultimately in the end. So please take a moment and subscribe to E-news for small businesses. Uh, we use our social media tools a lot now because we feel that this is a great opportunity for us to reach out to you on different information that as it changes, tax changes, scam alerts, uh, any new initiatives that we feel are relevant, products, services, those types of things. This is what we use our social media tools to share with you. Uh, that recruitment handle, we are looking to hire at the IRS. Side note, okay. So we are looking to hire, the IRS is hiring, federal government is hiring, so if you're looking for a, a job, if you are a tax professional, I think I saw someone who said they are a tax pro. We need you. We need tax professionals who know the, the what they're doing. 
And if you're not a tax professional, there is a place for you at the IRS. And I know what I'm talking about because I've been here for 36 plus years, folks. So you should come on and consider joining us. All right. And I know Kalina was like, is this a, I didn't know this was going to be a commercial for hiring for the IRS, but you know, I just had to kind of throw that in there uh, as, as a little side note. Uh, so if you want to find out more information about the positions that's available, just go to um, jobs.irs.gov, www.jobs.irs.gov, okay? And there might be a hiring event in your location. So check that out, okay? All right. And I am here. So we're at the questions uh, it's time. And I don't even know what time it is. It's a little after 11.05. Okay. So we got plenty of time for questions. And uh, these questions, I, I'll just put it out there, folks. Uh, these questions can be relative to what we talked about today. Uh, if there's something burning and it's something even beyond what we shared today, I'm willing to, to answer those questions as well. All right, so let me do, let me stop sharing. And while you're doing that, I just want to reiterate everybody, if you do have a question for Yvette about what she covered today, at Yvette and Paul, what they covered today, um, feel free to put your question in the chat or you can un unmute your device and ask your question. Yep, so, and and. It's very, very, again, it's very, very rare uh, that we get a chance to talk to small businesses one on one. this this is this is not always what we do because Kalina, you could, for example, the city of Columbia, Office of Business Opportunity, that's my partner. And we're providing us in our in our partnership, we're share uh, this is an opportunity for us to get information directly to those she serves, right? So again, folks, this is an opportunity for you to ask your questions about your small business, uh, about these record keeping, um, anything along those lines with relative to your small business. So Paul and I are here. So what questions do you have? Don't be shy. I don't In need bed. your security number. I don't need your, no, yes. Hi, Hi. I am. Uh, that tax professional. Oh, okay. okay, awesome. So, my question to you with your 36 years of experience and thank you for what you do. Uh, uh. Woo, I wouldn't be you. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> Gee, thanks, eh? <laughs> so I, I had a client, okay, that wanted to apply. Mm -hmm. We went through the process. I explained to the client, you are not eligible. Okay, from from my what I went through, the experience, the research, you are not a you're not eligible. This person, I guess they received some additional information that enticed them to believe that they were eligible. Mm. So they went with this individual or whoever they were, now knows that they're not eligible, wants to come back for me to help fix the process. Oh, wow. I say no. I'm not. I'm not getting in that. I don't want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. But I want your feedback, you as a professional. How would you have handled that? So, as okay, thank you for for asking that question. So, as you have, as you can tell throughout my conversation with you all today, I am pro tax pros. I am. I am all in for my tax professionals, okay? Because of the knowledge, the wealth of knowledge that you bring to the table. Just like I was saying before, you have the knowledge, you have, you've done the research, you've gone to the classes there. Tax professionals are required to get CPE, continuing professional education credits every single year, okay? You all are worth your, your weight in, in gold. So what I've told tax professionals in the past is every client may not be your client. 
and you have the, the volition to make the decision as to who you represent. And if you have a client who does not follow your instruction as a business owner yourself, if you make a decision and make choices because your client wants you to knowing the law and you go against it and, and do whatever the client is asking you, that is jeopardizing your business. Okay. So I don't fault you for saying, I'm sorry, I can no longer, I can't help you with that. That I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Again, what, 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 you are a small business owner. You, you, you are, you are your own business. So you have to protect your own, your business. Um, when it's, as far as the IRS is concerned, you know, there's the office of professional responsibility. So you could be, uh, held responsible for anything that is done fraudulently with those, those clients. So I don't blame you for saying, hey, I'm sorry, go back to the go back to the third party that did this on your behalf and have them make this request to to withdraw or to do the voluntary disclosure program if they can find them. Well, well, that was the problem because that's I'm exactly sure what I told that client. I said, no, ma'am. Mm -hmm. you need to go back to the individual that did that. They can help you. I can't find them. I said, well, I can't, I can't help you. Uh, you know, and, and I, one thing I do, Yvette, is I explain to my clients up front, legal, moral, and ethical. That's mm -hmm. what I'm about. If I can't help you, if that's not how you operate, then we are not a good fit. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I totally agree. And for all the business owners on, on the call, on this call right now, please take note to what she is saying, because you have to be an advocate for your business. Every client may not be your client. Every, every good opportunity or business opportunity may not be for you. Okay. And that's okay. That's okay. As a business owner, you're going to have to have your own level of, of um, I don't even know how to say it. You, you have to have your own level of integrity. Inte exactly. Mm -hmm. Things that you will and will not do. Uh, because again, this is your business. You have to protect your, your business, yourself. You have to protect your uh, employees. This, this is so be vigilant in, in making sure that you are protecting yourself and your business. Because I know a lot of folks think that the IRS's goal is to put people out of business and take all their money and all of that. I promise you, it's, it's, it's quite the contrary. We and, need and you bet. Can I share this with you too? One of the things for me that's important with, with clients before I take them, I'm not just a tax professional. Mm -hmm. I am an educator. So mm -hmm. if you are not willing to be educated as I'm doing your taxes, mm -hmm. I need you to go kick rocks because I, I don't want to just do your taxes. I want you to understand your taxes and what I'm doing for you. So in the future, you know what I'm saying? And so, yes, yeah, and I get a lot of clients, but I don't want to do that. I just want you to do my taxes, go kick rocks. Then we're not a good fit because that's what we're supposed to do. Educate them also. Yes, ma'am. That's you're exactly right. You're exactly right. And, and that's, again, why I'm telling folks, you need to find a tax professional that is a good fit for you. If you don't understand the words coming out of their mouth, that's not a good fit for you. You need to be working with someone who understand you can understand and you can feel free to ask questions or even question what they put on your documents. Because please understand, folks, that might be your tax professional, but when something goes awry, the IRS is going to knock on your door for payment. Okay. Your tax professional can be there to, to act as your representative, but the bottom line is the IRS is going to, the, the tax professional is not going to make that payment for you. And if you did not say, Hey, I don't quite understand what you're saying. I don't quite understand this form. I don't quite understand what I'm signing business owner, if you don't understand what you're signing, 
please understand that you really, really need to find someone else. You got to have a, uh, the communication is two ways. It's not a one way thing. And, 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 and if you don't understand uh, what that tax professional is saying to you, then again, that's your volition to make a different choice. Please find someone that you can talk to and understand because if something goes awry the, and there's a balance due, that tax pro is not going to pay it. You business owner, you're going to be the one to pay it. So you need to make sure you're understanding your what your tax professional is putting in front of you. You understand what they're saying and you are willing to receive and, and accept and understand. Take ownership of what they... They're going to give you information. If you got a good tax professional like this young lady here, they're going to give you nuggets. They're going to teach you along the way. They're not going to just say, here, sign this. Here, sign here. And then and then you go on your merry way. They're going to explain to you what you're signing, why we're at, why, why we arrived at this. No, you can't claim that. Why? Because of this, this, and this. And 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 Another thing, so as, as a business owner, folks, we're not expecting you to be a tax professional, but we are expecting you to do your own due diligence and have enough knowledge to question and ask questions and make sure before you sign your name on anything, you have an understanding of what you're signing because it's your business. It's your responsibility. And, and one more thing I wanted to add to uh, event if I if I could is yes, that I'm gonna tell you I'm a tax professional but I'm a I'm transparent. Mm -hmm. If there is something that I don't know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you. Hey, wait a minute now that right. that's that's a little above my pay grade. Yeah. But if you allow me to do the research, yes. let me and I do that with every app every every client I have anyway. I'm gonna research. Yes, ma'am. Research and then I'm gonna get back to you. And that's just like I got a client now that that dip that that is hey oh it cryptocurrency is his life. I, I just and this is a client I've had for five years, and I tell him, okay, what we gonna do? Us is gonna get us a tax attorney. We's gonna <laughs> learn this year together. I've offered to do that with him together, and then if you want me to still do your taxes, then we'll go from there. But I'm telling you, this is not a good year for me to do your taxes because you got all this mess, this tax. So, and, 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 and I know the IRS is even struggling with cryptocurrency and digital assets. And so that's yeah. what it's going to do. <laughs> but, yeah. but, it's, but, but the, if your tax professional is not transparent, if your tax professional is not honest, because they don't, we don't know it all. We don't, everything, right. we got to do we research don't. ourselves. And we so we, that's, exactly right. important. that's important. <laughs> okay, I'm yes, not gonna say anything else. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you so very much. And 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 I'll take it a step further. News flash. I don't know everything. Paul doesn't know everything. We are not a computer. Well, even the computers that I rely on people to put information in there to be to be pulled out. So no. So yes, we do have to take time to do research to give you sound advice and and, and information. We're not, uh, I mentioned before, we are, I want to share this resource document because in that document, you're going to find a whole lot more information that beyond what Paul and I shared here today, but you are going to have to do your own research, your own, again, I say this again, due diligence, because the time that you spend researching and getting an understanding of these things, of of the business tax credits that may be uh, uh, applicable to you, you're going to save yourself a lot of money in the end. It's worth it. So we don't know everything. We get questions every day. This is filing season. We get questions every day. Cryptocurrency, you're right, young lady. Yes, this is new. This is new territory for the IRS, and we're trying to figure it out. So there, there, there. Again, even within the IRS. There's an opportunity for us to, to learn and then share what we've learned with you. So uh, I, again, I'm just going to say thank you all. And I appreciate you all for taking the time out to even come on today to uh, and, and learn more about the business online account, the business tax account, about the uh, tax scams, about uh, the employee retention credit and the new program that's out there, the withdrawal process those types of things. 
please, folks, if you, I know you're, you're the, the, let's see, I don't see any questions here. Um, and I know a lot of times people kind of shy away from asking questions and that's okay. Uh, but even beyond today, you've got our email address and I'll make sure included and included in that research document that I'm gonna work on as soon as we hang up so I can get it to you in time, Kalina, to share before this afternoon, okay? So I'll make a commitment to work on that and get that to you because uh, I'm going to make some additions to it based on our conversation today. Um, okay. Yeah. So again, folks, we, we're we here even beyond today um, to, to help you with your questions. Again, Paul and I are outreach education. We're, in, we're, we're tax specialists and we don't, but we don't have access to social security numbers, employer identification numbers, things of that nature. So we cannot look up your account. I can't tell you why you don't have your tax refund yet. I'll tell you to go to irs.gov and click on the link that says, where's my refund? That's what I can tell you to do. I can give you the resource so that you can go and, and get that information. Uh, we do appreciate you. Thank you all so very much for joining us today. I hope you learned something new. Uh, and and if you have any questions, again, you'll have the information that you need to reach out to us. Thanks, Kalina. All right. uh, Aisha, thanks y'all so much. I appreciate this. We are Thank so good you. to see you. Thank you so much, Yvette. Uh, we really appreciate you and Paul as well with all the wealth of information you provided to our participants today because I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to have Ooh. a lot of information, a lot of questions, and especially around this time of the year with it being so close to tax season. But we well in tax season. But we want to thank everybody, everybody for being on this call today. This is why we do what we do. We provide information and resources to those. If you can't get to these people directly, we provide them to you. And we're going to continue to provide more well, more um, webinars and workshops throughout the year. Um, but again, as oh, I'm sorry, Yvette, go ahead. You just prompted me to remind everybody. So. We have the, the Taxpayer Assistance Center has some Saturday hours. Uh, and for Columbia, they've added March 18th, I'm sorry, May 18th for assistance. You don't have to sign up or, or, or call in to get an appointment. You just walk in, it's, a, it's May 18th, Saturday from nine to four. If you got questions about your tax returns and things of that nature, Walk. You can walk in there on Saturday in the Columbia office, 1835 Assembly Street, 1835 Assembly Street, May 18th from 9 to 4. If anybody's near Charleston, theirs is on April 13th. That's the Saturday, April 13th, 9 to 4 in, at the Charleston location, IRS office. So I, I wanted to, to say that. Okay. And Yvette, Yvette, can you in that include that in your information that you're going to send to me? I will add that to the list. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll add it so, to the list. Okay. So thank you all so much. Um, before we go, uh, we just want to give you a couple of reminders, but I'll let our director, Aisha Jurgis, if she has any closing comments before I close. No, this was great. I appreciate um, Yvette and Paul coming to join us today. It's great when we can provide the resources directly to our small business community as they continue to tell us what they need. And then we search out to see what experts are out there so we can provide that information. So um, for those that are on the call, we will send a survey later for you to complete just so that you can give us feedback on um, additional trainings that you may want in the future. Um, I think this was a very comprehensive and thorough presentation. So thank you both. We appreciate your partnership and look forward to continuing to work with you as there's always, people always have questions about their, their taxes. And we know that that can make or break a small business. So it's so important that they're educated on, on how the rules apply to them. And um, like you said, none of us know everything, but if you know where to find the answer or where to ask the question, that, that's really um, half of answering the problem. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you, Aisha. So um, before we go, we just want to briefly remind you all that if you have registered for today's um, webinar, you will receive, as Aisha said, the survey. And you will also receive the resource information provided by Yvette and Paul. And you will also see, receive the PowerPoint presentation. And um, we are going to be working on trying to get the recording uploaded to our website. So be on the lookout for that in the coming days as well. But um, just to remind you all, our next webinar is going to be on 
March the 27th at 10 a.m. It will be a virtual and in-person in webinar, Bridging the Generational Gap in the Workplace Series, the Acquisition and Retention of Generation Z. If um, registration is still open on our Eventbrite page, so please go over and register if you would like to attend in-person or virtually. And on behalf of the Office of Business Opportunities, I want to thank everybody for being on the call today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great day.